everyone. Thank you to our final week of our entrepreneurship series hosted by the Carteret County Public Library. My name is Leslie Mason. I'm the Carteret County Public Library Director. And with me for our final workshop series is Bob Graham. Hey, welcome. Thank you. This has been great. I can't believe five weeks has come to an end this fast. Yeah. It seems like we just got started. And just to give you a review, <clears throat> we started the first week with what you're really trying to do, why it matters to you. <clears throat> Sorry. The second week, we talked about why it matters to your customer, what is in it for them, what problem you solve for them. And then the third week, we talked about how to connect with your customer how you can get in front of them and what to say to them. And then last week, and I'm going to tell you right now, if you haven't watched it, you got to watch last week. The round table we had was amazing. We got so many value bombs, as I like to say, you know, really great insights from people from all kinds of fields. They were so open and honest. And so that brings us to this week, our last week, which is all about funding things. You know, we're not made of money. Most of us don't have $4 million to devote to our business. So we've got to find creative ways to fund our business. Um, and I want to start that discussion with what I think is at the core of funding a business. And I've worked in my own, I've started two companies myself, and I've worked with a number of people in various phases of businesses from tech startups. I mean, like one that's probably going to go for a half billion dollars and be bought by Apple in the next couple of months to really small one person businesses where they're just doing consulting or coaching or training and everything in between. And the one thing I find over and over and over is that people are reluctant to invest in themselves. They're like, Oh, I'll, I'll do my business when I have enough money in my savings account. I'll do it when I have five contracts. I'll do it when I have health benefits from someone. I can't give up my nice full-time job. I can't give up my nice benefits. I can't do all these things. I totally get it. At various times in my careers, I've had nice salaries and nice benefits. And I will tell you in the last two years and nine months, I haven't had a steady paycheck. I've had months where I've made zero. And I've had months where I've made a lot of money. There is no rhyme or reason to it. There are days that I go to bed and go, oh, please, God, I've got to have money for the mortgage. And then there are days when it's like, how did I make so much money doing what I love? And what I've found for me is I've got to commit to myself. I've got to believe in myself. So in the course of my two businesses, I've borrowed money from my retirement fund I've um, asked people for gifts. You know, I asked a family member who gives me a nice Christmas gift. I was like, hey, um, I need some uh, shirts with a logo on them. How'd you like to give me that for Christmas? And my mother was all too happy. She's like, how much is it gonna cost? I'm like, you know, $85, mom. She's like, will you use them? I'm like every day. So every couple of weeks, I send my mother a nice little picture of me and my vest, or I have a sweater that I wore, I think last week, and I've got some polo shirts. And my mother loved it. And I would also, if I needed to, go back to my mother, who at some point, she's 84, so at some point she's probably going to die. I think we can assume that. She's going to give me a chunk of money. I would not feel bad going to my mother and saying, Mom, this is really important to me. I'm trying to build something. I need some capital. Would you be willing to give me a portion of the money you're going to give me after you die now? Here's the double benefit. One, I really need it right now, mom. And two, you get to see all the great things I can do with it. And I've coached a lot of people on this and they are surprised how easy it is. They're like, oh, I could never ask my parents for money. I could never ask my wife to dip into our savings account. But if you're really committed to what you're doing and you explain it to someone in really powerful language, they go, whoa, so this isn't like a weekend thing for you. No, this is my life. This is who I am. This is what I want to do in the world. This is, this is Bob on Thursday night at 6 p.m. when 
There are plenty of fun things that could be going on right now. There's a basketball game I'd love to watch. I don't care. This is what I'm meant to do. And when I had that discussion with people, they're like, how can I help you? Yeah. And the help can be financial. Sometimes it's, hey, um, I didn't realize you were serious about this. I've got some connections you might like. So don't be afraid to share with the people in your life what you're really up to. And not the, you know, I, uh, I do business coaching training. I'm like, um, can I just explain to you? I'm changing lives here. I'm doing workshops that are changing people's lives. And they go, oh, you, what do you mean? I'm like, well, they start here and they get here. And we do these things along the way. And Leslie, you do it with the library. You know, you're changing lives every single day. And if you just go, well, I'm the director of the library system, that doesn't even scratch the surface of what I know you do every single day. And the more we share what we're passionate about and how we see it changing the world, the more people will get on board with us. I like to think of it visually as a train. I'm the conductor, I'm the, uh, the captain of the, what's, who's, who's the engineer? No, who's the person who runs a train? I'm totally blanking. Engineer? It's, it's the engineer, yeah. Okay, so the engineer's at the front of the train and then the people are in the back and the people are just sort of on for the ride till they get to the next city. I like to think of my business and what I do as being the engineer and people hop on board and they can hop on board. And the price of admission to hop on board is you support me. Even if it's just every time I mention, you know, you see me, you go, oh, Bob, hey, how's it going? How are the book sales? My wife has an uncle that I see maybe once every year or two. Every time I see him, he'll be like, so Bob, I get all your emails. You're doing some great stuff. And he'll always recite something that has happened in the last little while. He is one of my favorite people in the world to run into because he has no reason whatsoever to care, but he does. And he's one of those guys that I find is on the train with me. And he's one of those guys, he had been following me for a number of years. He just emailed me about two months ago and said, hey, um, I know the owners of the Utz Potato Chip Company which is a big regional potato chip company, they're growing, said, I want to connect you with them. I thought it was a joke, but I said, no, back, sure, that'd be great. Next thing you know, I'm connected to these people. So you never know where it is. And I think more than finding funding, which is important, don't get me wrong, we're going to talk about that more, it's finding support because support comes in a lot of ways. Leslie is incredibly supportive of what I do by just going, oh, I love that soft skills book. Have you thought of doing a workbook on that? I had not thought of that. She mentioned that a week or two ago, and I'm now working on that idea. That didn't cost her anything, but it could be a huge opportunity for me. And so think about where you have those people that support you. And some of those people that support you one way might be willing to support you in other ways. They might just be like, you know what? Um, I, I, I've got this little extra amount of money and I believe in what you're doing and maybe they'll fund it. Another way I will tell you I have funded things. I'm not proud of this. I just paid off two business credit cards. I'm so excited, but I put some things on credit. I got business credit cards and I would put things on credit and there were months where I paid the fee. And it was one of those deals where like, I just, I need to have enough money to run my business. You know, the technology costs some money, the email service, the this, the that, buying the books, you gotta buy the books before you can sell the books. So I charged some things and then I would pay them back. Now I was smart. I found a credit card by a national company. And if you track me down, I'll tell you who it is that gives you cash back. So every time I spend a dollar, I got three cents back. And with one of my clients, I was buying some Facebook ads for them and using my account to spend $1,200, $1,500 a month on Facebook ads. And I was getting a nice little amount back just because I'd set up this account so that I got money back. So being creative, another way I've encouraged people when they're looking to be coached by me and they're like, well, I don't really have any money right now. I'm like, here's the great thing. You could pay for it on PayPal. 
PayPal actually has a thing for a business where you can delay payment for up to six months. I'm like, don't you think it's six months we're going to make it, you're, we're going to make your business so you make money? They're like, oh, absolutely. I'm like, there you go. Charge the monthly fee and you build that up. And I, every time I've done that with someone, they paid it back within the first two months. And every single one of those people, and I go through this with people all the time, because I, I haven't talked a lot about what I do, but I do a lot of business coaching. And I talk to entrepreneurs, and I always seem to talk to them when they're at the worst moment, where they're like, oh, I can't make any money. I'm really almost out of money. I don't know what I'm going to do. And it's like, you know, what I give for someone who's like, hey, I've got $20,000, and I've got six months with my business. Could you help me now? But most of the people I talk to, they're down to the last little bit of money. And I'm there like, yeah, I can help you. I can do great things with you, but you have to pay me. So I've learned how to do this. Another creative way I've done this, um, I've had people take money from their retirement fund. And they're like, well, I can't do that. It's for my retirement. I'm like, well, where is the money? Well, it's in the stock market. Okay, you realize when your money's in the stock market, you're gambling on that company doing something to support you wouldn't you rather support yourself there's a great book the millionaire next door from uh early 90s and i remember reading that book at 3 a.m i'm in bed i'm worried about my business my first business i'm reading the book and it says if you are going to bet on one person bet on yourself i was like oh my god that's brilliant <laughs> i should do that because here's the thing I know about myself, and this is what I know about you, Leslie, and I know about everyone in this, in this audience that's gonna watch this. You can be trusted to do something to fix your situation in a way no one else can. You have far more skill, you're far more adaptable, you're far more capable than you realize. When push comes to shove, you will figure it out. I, ha I have a friend who's a business owner and he doesn't always make a lot of money and he does Uber driving sometimes. That makes ends meet. He's like, yeah, you know, I gotta do that because I believe in myself and I know it's coming and every month he gets closer and he does more of his business and less Uber. Other people deliver pizzas. People stay at their full-time job and build the business on the side. I've done that. You work nights, you work weekends, you call in. I can remember calling in sick to my job a couple of times to do presentations. I'm just going, hey, I won't be in today and just praying that there's no publicity around what I'm gonna do. This, this is the world we're in. If you are really committed to what you wanna do, if you really believe in yourself and if you really believe in your mission, and for me, it was mission first and then me second. Once I started to realize it's like, man, when I coach these people, cool stuff happens. Once I do this thing with people, they are like on fire. This is what God has intended for me to do. I know this is what I'm meant to do. And, it, and I want to support it. I have a friend who I run a Facebook group with called the Ring of Renegades. And you please look for ringofrenegades.com and you can join. Love to have you join. It's for entrepreneurs and business leaders. My friend always says that, um, you know, you almost hurt the world to not give them your gift. Leslie, your gift is you can run libraries. If you don't do that, the world suffers. You, you are not giving the world your God-given talent, whatever it is. If you're a great musician, I have a, a niece who's soon to be husband is a really great, he's got a marvelous voice. I mean, it's like off the charts. And I said to him, hey, do you sing much? He's like, yeah, I try to a couple times a month. You know, I do some weddings, I do this, I do that. And I was like, oh, why do you do it every month? It's gotta take a lot of work. He's like, because I know it's what I'm meant to be doing. And he's never, I don't know if he worries about making money from it, but it's what he means to do. And I think if you think about what you're doing in terms of how you're helping the world, and not how you make a paycheck from it all the time. If you're in service to people, the money will follow. And the rewards, you know, I can tell you, I've had situations where I made a lot of money. I've had times where I made a little money. 
I've never been happier when I made more money. I had a period of time where I didn't have to sweat money at all for a couple of years. And I thought this was the greatest thing in the world. And then it was like, wow, whatever. And, and my theory is you always want 10, you always need 10% more than you have. You know, you, more, more money, more problems. I forget who says that one of, one of those rappers, I can't probably Drake or, you know, I don't know, but isn't it Leslie, who is it? You would know. Sean Combs. <laughs> P Daddy, Puff Daddy. P Daddy, okay, all right. Diddy. I knew it, was, I knew it wasn't Bruno Mars. Yeah. Sean Combs. Oh, I feel so old somehow. Um, oh, no, and, all right, it might have been Biggie Small. It was some, one of the East Coast. Yeah, now, yeah, now we're getting right. on track. She'll put it in the minutes of the meeting. I will put it in the notes. I'll research that. So, with this as a background, and I wanted to give you that context first thing to think about money is, do you believe in what you're doing? Do you have a plan? Now, I've worked with businesses where they have complete business plans down to we're going to do this, this, this. The only people I see really do that are the ones who go to banks for funding. Now, you may know, Leslie, I know you know the grant world more than me. Perhaps grants, you need to have that really detailed business plan. I can tell you if you need that, you can go to SCORE. There are score chapters all around the country. There's probably one in your area and they will help you build that. They'll give you a template, they'll review it. But I've also seen people with no business plan, but just like on a sheet of paper, a napkin. Okay, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. And that is what they move into. I built a business, my second, the business I'm running now, uh, my partner and I, when we were first starting it, we literally were at a beach house with a sheet of paper and mapped out podcasts, book, research, the whole bit. And that was our map. I mean, I have it down in my basement still to this day. And I look at it and it's like, wow, this is so amazing. And so I'm going to turn the floor over to you, Leslie, because I know you have some really cool ways to generate uh, money to fund a business. Yeah, and I think it dovetails nicely into what you're saying, because if this is something that you are really passionate about, you're going to have to get creative. And I think um, people need to think about grants a little more realistically. And, and why should they consider grants for their business? And it's because grant money is there to address a very specific issue within your own community. So inherently speaking, grants are already identifying a need you have a business or a service, the need is already demonstrated and there's money there for it. I think there's a huge misconception that you have to be a nonprofit to get a grant. And this is where I want people to start thinking creatively. You don't have to be the nonprofit. You need to find out where the nonprofits are and let them know about you, right? Because a nonprofit who works um, with, you know, uh, community development, doesn't isn't necessarily a contractor but you are right and so you can provide that service i think this is a great bob is the perfect example i got a grant to fund this uh program and i went out and found bob who could facilitate this program that i wanted to do so if people start thinking that way that the grant doesn't have to be directly to you you do part of the work you find out where that money is does it match the, the type of customer you're looking for. Do you have a product or service that you're passionate about? How can you modify it to fit that community need? Um, I'll give you, can I give you an example of fitting the community need? I did a workshop for a year or two called Dealing with Change. And someone said to me when the pandemic started, you know, I, I think you could do that workshop with the pandemic and just talk about some of the pandemic issues and every municipality is getting CARES funding from the federal government, and they don't know what to do with it. And I was like, huh. So I literally went to all five governments that I had done free walk workshops for in the last year and said, hey, I think this might qualify. I think you might have funding. And two of them were like, oh, this is awesome, because if we don't use the money, we have to send it back. How could you do it? And I, and I gave them the outline and they were like, they were appreciative that I pointed them in the right direction. And I think that's different. 
than most people think. Most people think you're going to sit in your office or at your home and your phone's going to ring and someone's going to go, hey, um, Bob, I've got this really cool thing. Now, in the case of Leslie, it did. But we've worked together. She right. knows exactly what I do and I know what she does. We've already done the hard work. But if you're starting a business and you don't have those relationships, your phone is not going to ring. I don't care how great your website is. I don't care how many Facebook ads you have. I don't care how marvelous your business card looks or how great you look when you go out and network. You've got to build those relationships because that's the name of the game. And if you're, I think if you're looking for this grant funding, you need to know the organizations and you need to, I, I had someone tell me a couple of years ago, if you're going to apply for a grant or be anywhere involved with the grant, you need to understand that grant better than you understand your own person. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. And here's the thing too, you know, I always tell people who come into the library and they're looking for work or they're going to do their job searching. And I think this applies to people who are um, going after leads and um, trying to sell themselves. It's a full-time job to get a job. Oh, yeah. So if you're going to diversify and go after these grants, you have to look at it with that same sort of intensity. Um, I was at a county commissioner's meeting just this week and there was a presentation by our local um, council of governments and they were highlighting programs that were already happening in the community. And one of them was a grant program that is specifically de designed for senior citizens to retrofit their homes as they age, right? So Ooh. adding ramps, um, putting in new carpet that's not high pile, so it's not a tripping hazard. That's money that's already out in the community. If you're a contractor struggling to schedule work, why wouldn't you put up a one pager that specifically addresses what you're going to charge to help people age in place and send it to your local um, council on aging? Yep. There's money there for it. And for those of us who apply for grants, if I have that pricing in front of me, if I have all of those specs already spelled out, I'm going to copy and paste that into that grant application. It, it only makes it easier for me to do business with you down the road. So try to do that. I also tell folks, make sure you have your DUNS number, your um, data universal number system. That is going to be the number that you register with. And when you fill out grants or if you're a part of a grant making um, agency, you need that DUNS number. It's super easy. It's free. It's basically this universal um, database of business. And um, for if you want to qualify, I'm yeah. that one down myself. You, you, I like you need a DUNS number. You need a DUNS number. It's just another way to identify your business to the federal government, to state and local municipalities. Different than the EIN. Different than the EIN. Although yeah, a lot of grants you can, identification number. Okay. Yeah. Often you can use them interchangeably, but the DUNS number makes it really easy for people to find you. And um, it's just another way to fill out the grant form. How do I chase down a DUNS number? And I'm asking I mean, for everyone. You literally to... type in DUNS number application and the website will pop up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have a I have a really great um sheet that I've prepared that all of this stuff is linked in and I'll make sure that everybody who's registered awesome. uh, gets a copy of that. So I have that. Um, so Bob talked about this um, a little bit already, but make sure that you uh, touch base with your small business uh, development offices. Uh, every community has one. They're often called something a little different. Sometimes it's SCORE, sometimes it's SBA. Um, Sometimes it's connected to the community college. Sometimes it's connected to your local EDC. Um, those small business associations have unbelievable um, opportunities for micro grants, especially from the small business administration at the federal level. So make sure they know who you are. Um, you know, there's all kinds of grants out there too. If you are a protected class or you are interested in hiring people in a protected class. So make sure that you are looking at if, if you're, this is an easy one to always use as an example, but if you're a contractor, let's say you're in HVAC and you need some help, you need staff. Why not register to be part of an apprenticeship program that helps people re-enter 
from incarceration. You're going to get paid to teach people how to do your job so that they can also start their own business. So maybe you can hire them later. But in the meantime, you're, you're, get, you're getting subsidized labor. It's a great program. Plus, you get the support of the grant making organization that's helping you with that. So they're going to help you with some HR aspects to the work as well. Nice. Um, There's also a lot of this with the military. Yes. Um, that, like, I'm amazed at the opportunities the military has to, I forget what, it's like from boots to business, I think is one of their initiatives. And I've seen some people really find great employees that understand how to operate in the business world because it's so much easier than being in Afghanistan. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and they know it and they love it. And there's some funding for that that I've seen people get. I don't know if you have military facilities near you. I know we've got- Oh, a lot, yeah. Before. Yeah, okay. yeah, and, and also too, consider, consider if you're part of that uh, protected class, you could qualify to be a subcontractor. So right. that makes your business more lucrative for grant, federal grant funding and federal and state contracts because that general contractor can sub out to you and they get extra points. So. Make sure you're utilizing all of these aspects when you're starting your business. Um, make, you know, your, oh, you had said something about um, military there. So most bases have a veterans business outreach center That's, and yes. they're going to, yeah, they're going to have all of those very specific things. Um, and you had talked about um, artists, musicians, you know, check with your local arts councils. Um, I found a grant in the state of Maine. The state of Maine will pay you to teach people your art as sort of an apprenticeship opportunity. So you host a camp, you teach people glass blowing in, it, in its original traditional form, and the state, as part of a cultural investment grant, will pay you to help do that. You may have never considered hosting a class or teaching someone this, but if it's a way to subsidize, you know, your art, why wouldn't you, right? I'm trying to figure out if my writing would qualify for that. <laughs> hey, you you just don't know, right? You just don't know. And it's it's also, I want people to think of their business in a different way. Oh, I'm an artist, but how can you make that art more appropriate to a community need, right? Because that's where the grant funding comes in. Uh, the District of Columbia has grants for folks who um, want to do, uh, who offer quality summer camps for kids, yep. right? So what part of your business can you scale or, or change and turn it into a camp atmosphere for kids? I was thinking about Jenny and her, and her mindfulness and her, and her yoga company, mm -hmm. I think she has a great opportunity to structure that in a camp environment for kids, teaching kids how to be mindful or maybe using, you know, breathing techniques to um, maybe instead of having a violent outburst, they can self-regulate. All of these can be classes that she could teach um, as part of physical well-being, mental health. There's all kinds of grant opportunities for things like that. I don't know if she would have ever thought of something like that, but it speaks directly to what it is she's trying to do. And there's a lot of money out there for that, not just at the state level, but at the federal level too. Um, I talked about the place. There's also you. some money, Leslie, I know through universities and colleges. Yes. You know, um, I've, I've had some friends who are like, uh, you know, I, I do this thing. I have a friend who does graphic design. I'm like, I bet the community college would love for you to teach a graphic design course. And she went to them and they open arms. Oh, that's awesome. And yeah. she found two employees from it. Yeah, right. Yeah, I they mean, were great artists. And she's like, hey, I'd like to offer you a job after the course was over. So it can be win-win. Absolutely. And I, I mean, I think you said it. If it's your passion, it's whatever way you can tap into that, it's going to work for you. It's going to come back in dividends. Um, also think about where you are regionally. Uh, so when I was working in Western North Carolina, of course, I'm originally from West Virginia. There's a lot of money out there for um, opportunities in rural and Appalachian areas. So there's lots of redevelopment grants for things like that. If you're looking for physical space, 
consider moving into a small downtown area that's looking for revitalization. There's all kinds of grants out there for folks who are willing to maybe be in an area that's not quite as developed, but if it's almost free space for you, what do you have to lose? You're gonna be part of a redevelopment process. It's only gonna bring more um, attention to what you're doing. You're gonna be part of a larger group of people who are also passionate about this particular project. Um, all those downtown groups, those small downtown partnership groups, Main Street USA groups, there's all kinds of grants for re, you know, fixing your facade on your building, things like that. Um, signage. Signage to be historically accurate. Access. Really, yeah, you could do some really great things with that money and it's helping you establish sort of a brick and mortar business. Um, and those areas can become trendy, like Lynchburg, oh. Virginia, 10 years ago, not so exciting. And now you go there and it's like it's one happened. of the nicest places in the country. Absolutely. It's on the top 20 list of places to move to run your business. Yeah. Uh, if you just start thinking a little more creatively, if you're in food service or you have a program that is culinary based or has anything to do with food, that opens up a whole nother world of grants through um, the USDA, especially depending on your geography. And I'll do you one better. If, if you're on a food truck, you can apply for grants to help combat food insecurity in food desert communities. So, I mean, just think a little bit more strategically about what's out there. If, if you're not sure how to find some of these things, I highly recommend, of course, go to your library, um, make an appointment, also make an appointment with your elected officials. Your elected say, officials yeah. have people in their offices, this is their exact job. And it's a win-win for the elected official because of course they wanna brag about bringing all of this money back into their own communities. So they're very in touch with what's happening at the local and federal level as it applies to money. Use sites like Grant Watch. Grant Watch is a paid service so you can get more results. But quite frankly, everything I found, I got from the free site because once I found something that looked a little bit interesting, like the, the program in Maine, I literally copied and pasted into Google and it took me to the Humanities Council in Maine where I found the grant. So grant you can get a lot. Grantwatch.com? Grantwatch, I have it linked in the document. Yeah. Let me see, Let's see if I can swap I'm sorry. over. I, I was just, I, I was being careful about taking notes for myself. You, you've got me inspired. I've already, I've already got them there. Grantwatch, it is .com. Okay. And I'll have it all on the um, on the document that I send back out, and it'll be on the web page we've been using too. Okay. So there's Grant Watch is a really great one. Um, Grants.gov will get you connected to all of the federal grants that are available, not just through the Small Business Administration. Um, there's also lots of individual grants from the individual departments. NASA has their own grant writing agency. Um, you know, Department National of National Institute of Health. Oh, absolutely. State absolutely. Department. You name a government agency and they have grant money. They have grant money. Yes. Yes. And they distribute some of that money directly. The Small yeah. Business Administration will help you, but you need to apply directly to that group. So there's state incentives, there's um, regional councils. There's a Carolina Small Business Development Council and their website is literally carolinasmallbusiness.org. Um, the, the company that funded this program is called NCIDEA. They have seed and micro grants um, for small businesses in North Carolina. Um, and this is, this is one where I really think it takes somebody who can be confident and think outside the box. Um, a lot of private companies, huge, huge um, companies have grants. Duke Energy has grants. Visa has grants. FedEx has small business grants. Um, Amazon. Amazon has grants. Um, Capital One Bank. Yeah, Wells Fargo. I mean, all of these companies have small business grants. Now, 
like I said, it's a full time job because they all have a different application process. But when you think about some of these larger um, entities like Duke Energy, um, they have grants that feed back into the community. So if you read what some of the grants are about, there's got to be a way to plug in what you have to offer to with what what they're offering to or find a nonprofit that you trust and who knows you and trust you and work with them to apply for these grants and help them manage that grant they'll hire you to actually perform the service i mean there's just a lot of opportunity there that just kind of gets left on the table um one thing about uh, grants, leslie can i jump in um absolutely i've talked to a lot of people who review grants and choose the winners and the number one complaint I hear from them every time is people don't write their application to match up to what they're looking for. So if you're trying to get your business, a brick and mortar business in an urban area and the grant is about food, if you don't have a food connection, you're wasting your time writing the grant. And I think the, the biggest thing I see is if you can't find a way to finagle what you're doing into exactly what they're asking for, like to the point yeah. where I, I've talked to the grant people and they're like, yeah, I love when people basically copy and paste exactly what we're doing and then show us how they're going to do exactly what we're looking for. I would yeah. say make it easy for them. You have to make it easy for them. And it's like applying for a job. How many times have we, and I know we've both gone through this process where we've vetted resumes. And I think, did this person even read the job description? They don't even have the entry level qualification. I, and you're just like, you're scratching your head going, I don't even know. And you just toss it. It's the exact same with applying for a grant. But I think if you're passionate about your business and your business is, um, you know, construction or it's health and wellness or it's, um, you know, service of some kind or food hospitality, there is a grant out there that you can connect with and you can find organizations that can accept the grant and hire you to do the work. And if you make it easy for that nonprofit, because let's face it, the nonprofit probably only has one or two people. Hey, I don't know. I know maybe you know me, maybe you don't. Um, I, there's this grant that's available to our community. And I really think if, if we got together and talked about it, it's something that we could do and it would be really beneficial um, to our neighborhood. And I can't think of any nonprofit that wouldn't be willing to have that conversation with somebody. No, I, mean, I think they'd be thrilled for someone to come oh, yeah. in and say, hey, by the way, there's this way for us to generate some real opportunity in the community. If you could do this grant, I'll help you build it. That, that's a win-win. Yeah. Well, and, and like you were saying with the cashback credit card, I mean, not all grants and not all opportunities come with just a check. I mean, there are some organizations, I want to switch over to my cheat sheet. Um, there are some opportunities that, that provide service. So there's, um, there's companies that have, um, they're called impact grants where they give free services. So they're going to give you free web design, free marketing, free logo design, and that's part of their grant. Um, so don't, you know, don't think that just because you're not going to get a check or it's directly involved in the work you do, it's still something that you're going to need and you're going to have to pay for it eventually anyway. So why not get it free by qualifying for one of these, um, one of these grants. Another thing I wish people would think about, and I think, I think people don't realize they're out there. There's a lot of fellowships out there. And if you can be involved in a fellowship, that fellowship is going to pay you to start your business if your business relates back to what that organizational mission is. There's a lot going on in, in education right now, especially now that we've gone virtual. So there's a lot of opportunities for think tank work as part of a fellowship. And I have them all listed out in the page of resources. but. I mean, there's just a ton of fellowship opportunities where you could get where you could literally get paid to think tank your business. Um, wow. And because you're answering a need in the community and that's yeah. really what this money is for. And if you have if you know your customer and you know your product and you know yourself, you're going to be able to match those things up. So um, I put a lot of information about some just make sure you over promise and under deliver. 
Right. Well, because there's they always like to, they like that report that says you did what you said you were going to do. Absolutely. Well, and think about it as your annual review. Anytime you work for a corporation or a company, you have to self-evaluate it as right. part of your annual review. So it's a little, it's a little bit like that. It's that same sort of process. Yep. These were the goals I had for the year. This is where we measured up. This is where we fell behind. This is where we exceeded. This is what we, this is a project projection for next year. Um, also think about the associations that you belong to, because you know, those are write-offs. So every profession has an association. There's library associations, there's builder contractor associations. And a lot of times those associations have grants. I found a grant, there's, an, there's a national association for the self-employed and they have a grant. So um, you have to really? be a member. Okay, so you spend a little money to make a little money. So those sorts of things are really exciting. You also um, contacts. With also those associations, and yeah, I will tell a lot you, of great contacts. you can yep. also find associations for your ideal customers. And um, when you join that association, suddenly you're in front of the people that you're looking for. And if you can get finagle an opportunity to speak, or um, I, I did an event where I was at the registration table. What a great opportunity to meet 120 people. I'm giving them name tags. Oh, hi, I'm Bob Grant. Oh, what's your company? Oh, here it is. And then I would go find them later and just chat with them. They'd be like, wait, you, you were at the table. So tell me what you do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, you just have to, you have to really, and I think part of it too is being willing and committed to put yourself out there, right? Because oh, if, yeah. you're gonna, if you're going to, if you're, if you're going to be wishy-washy about it, it's not going to happen because the people who you're going up against for some of these grants, they're passionate, they're committed, they've submitted their 10 page application with data sets and comparable. They've got the budget in there and that's who you're going up against. These are the same people who are going after your customers. So I think um, talked about it in the round table, right? Like, you know, how many times, um, one of the companies got customers because they did what they said they were going to do. They might be a little bit more, but they did what they said they were going to do. It's amazing that that's the bar that we set. Yeah. Just doing what you're supposed to do. I'm right. even doing it well. Just do right. it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm really ahead. excited. What else do you have? I, I, I mean, I, so I've got a resource list for everybody. There's a lot of information about the Small Business Administration, as well as a couple of different focus areas for them. Um, some are more concrete. Um, I mean, Bob, there's things out there if you have products that, you, that are ready to export. They'll, they'll help you export your products overseas even if it means investing on you to help scale so that you can fulfill those export um, opportunities. I mean, it's just almost, a, I started going down the rabbit hole and I sort of knew what I was looking for. Right. And I found stuff that I was like, I can't even believe this is a thing. Um, yeah. But they're out there. And if you, if you commit to spending a day or two just searching and just writing down, I mean, you're, you're gonna find something that makes sense whether it's regional, whether it's statewide, um, you know, whether it's an association or even going after being a, a federal contractor. Uh, and there's people and places out there to help you do that. No, absolutely. And, and it takes work. Yeah. This is not like the first grant you see you're going to apply for. And you, I know people that applied for 20 grants and not gotten one of them. But then the 21st grant comes through and it changes everything for them. I've also seen people who um, have opened uh, buildings or offices in areas that were not, ex you know, high interest, and they got tax write-offs. Tax credits are a great yeah. way to sort of figure out a way to um, kind of save money and pinch pennies here and there. Um, Baltimore City, in particular, is a great place to find. Um, even things like tax increment financing and tax yep. credits, Baltimore City is great for that. And there's a lot of opportunities like that here in North Carolina as well, especially if you're willing to go somewhere where your location qualifies for that. So if you're not married to a particular geographic 
corner, like, oh, I have to be on this corner. This is where I have to put my coffee shop. If if you're not married to that, the possibilities are endless. May, may, or you think, oh, well, you know what? I could be mobile. I could have a coffee cart. Like there's nothing saying I can't have a coffee cart. There you go. And I, I say this too, if you're thinking about business financing, think about it. And I, I, why I like Bob so much is he always really gives you concrete things to think about. So this is my Bobism. Take out the, take out the word grant and just like where you've said loan, put in grant, right? Yeah. So when you apply for a loan, you have to go through all of this process. And if you're willing to commit for a loan, why wouldn't you commit for a grant? Sure. There's no guarantee that you're going to get the loan. But yet you do you do all of that footwork, all of that admin work, all of that paperwork, all that budgeting, um, all those copies to apply for a loan. Why wouldn't you do it for a grant? Makes perfect sense. So Leslie, let me ask you a question, if I may. Yeah. If I wanted to pursue the world of grants, yes. what would you suggest I do as the first step in what you know and I know is a long process? What's the thing I could do tomorrow, this weekend, next Monday? I think after you've done everything that you've supposed to have done in this workshop, right? You're like You know yourself, you know your business, you know your product, you know your customers. Nice. That was right. You do all that first. <laughs> <laughs> so you are truly at week five. Um, I think you really have to examine the grant landscape and, and really find grants that make sense for you. Okay. Right. So if you, if you're, um, if you're a home builder or you're in, you're a massage therapist, understand that about yourself and look for grants that reflect the work that you do. It doesn't make any sense for somebody who wants to do work in mental health to be applying for USDA, you know, agriculture grants. Right. It doesn't make sense. Um, but if you're a beekeeper and you are thinking about making organic honey to sell at a farmer's market, you should absolutely be looking at USDA grants. Um, and just you know, understand that it is a process. So this is not some. If you've got bills that are due next week. This is not going to solve the problem for you. This should be part of a, a more holistic look about how you can fund your business long term. Um, I also find that working with other people to explore, you know, I have a real good friend that I, that I run a business with him and uh, we help each other with our individual businesses because he can see my business in ways that I don't see it. Like he said to me the other day, he's like, hey, these workshops you're doing, you should turn that into a course. I was like, that's brilliant. Um, and often we get so mired in doing what we're doing, our passion can also hurt us. And so yeah. having that person who can look outside and say, hey, Bob, there's this CARES funding thing you probably haven't heard about, but all the governments are scrambling. You might be able to help. And I think that's where for me, having a network of people who aren't just people do what I do and customers, but people in other industries, other fields who I talk to all the time. You know, when we were able to get a coffee, I'd have coffee with someone every couple of days and just pick their brain. So what's going on in your field? Yeah. Oh, you know, we're having trouble with technology. Oh, really? What's the problem? People are writing long emails. That led me to do a workshop on shorter emails how to do a three sentence email. And that's something that companies are still buying. And it was just because I asked someone at a coffee, what's going on in your industry. And so yeah. often what I think happens is we get so wrapped up in what we're doing. We don't seek additional input. And to me, success is taking what I'm really great at and finding a need outside of my world and mashing that together. It's what you and I have done here. You know, yeah. you have a need in your community. You had me as a resource and we pulled it together. And that to me is innovation. That's the creativity. And that's what grants look for. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I was thinking about it too, as I was looking, it was a little bit hard for me to do this research because it, I was, I was looking so at the huge landscape of grants. If I, if I were researching grants for a specific industry, 
I mean, that I could have talked for an hour about about construction grants. I mean, yeah. I, you just really need to know what you're looking for and be willing to adapt to that community need. Now, where it's going to be good to have someone like you or, or, you know, a partner that you can bounce ideas off of, you don't want to stretch too far, right? You have to. And we talked about it in one of the workshops about, you know, staying true to what you're trying to do and bringing people to that instead of the other way around. So yeah, if you um, go in every direction, you will never go anywhere. Right, and exactly. I, I always like to think of it as uh, two people rowing a boat. Yeah. One's going one way, one's going the other way, and all they do is go in circles. But if you yeah. get them coordinated, you get to where you want to go. And I think it's the same. Yeah, it's a good point because I think when I've looked at grants before, it's always been like, oh, I could do that for them. Oh, I could do that. But the more I'm out of what I'm already doing, the less chance it's going to really work because I'm not passionate about it. And so I would caution people wherever you're looking, you know, make sure it does fit what that passion that you identified that first week really is. Because if, you know, I'm not going to be a botanist. I'm not going to run a library. Could I run a library? I think I could if I had to, but I wouldn't bring passion to it. I'd be like, right. oh my God, it's so quiet here. Why do these people not talk? There's so many books. What is wrong with this place? I'm joking. But we've got you've got to follow your passion. And I think talking to elected officials, keeping tabs on the county and state government. Yeah. I'm amazed at how many times, you know, I used to be a newspaper reporter, but they would apply for grants, state and federal grants at the local level, and they get them. And if you weren't at the council meeting to hear that they applied for it and got it, they just didn't tell anyone. Yeah. It wasn't. And, and so look at the agenda for a council meeting. Look at the agenda for the state legislature. The state legislature in North Carolina passes a lot of grant opportunities. Yep. You know, local tourism, COVID yeah. recovery funding. Yeah. It, it's it's all out there. It, it's just a matter of finding it. And, and it's like everything else. If you do the hard work, you get the rewards. It's not going to be quick. It's not going to be easy. Just like finding your customers. If it were quick and easy, everyone would do it. The ones yeah. who succeed are the ones who go the extra mile, who look, you know, who go to the council meeting and ask the person who's talking about the grant opportunity, hey, so if you get this federal grant, how will you be um, telling how people How will you spend that? it, yeah. You know, what, what, what are you looking to do? And having those yeah. discussions, and I've done that with some grants with organizations where before I've applied, I've just picked their brain on it. You know, what are you, what are you really trying to do? Well, it says city, but it's really targeted to this small part of the city. Oh, okay. I'm either in or out. Yeah. And there's and there's someone in charge of all these grants who really yeah. understands it. So yeah. And I, I would also tell folks too, you know, don't be daunted by the process because just like a loan application, there's going to be parts of it that you can copy and paste. So really have a great paragraph about what it is you're going to do. You know, have really great deliverables that relate back to your service or product. Those one and two liners are going to be where you build the application. And, you know, another way to sort of leverage your, your money is take advantage of free things. We offered this entire workshop for free. I have a Google uh, workshop coming up in April that's free. April 1st, right? April 1st is a Grow with Google event. It's free. There's grant writing workshops out there. Yes, they're targeted to nonprofits, but it's still going to teach you that process and they're free. Um, Baltimore has a, a, a grant makers association. Yeah. Um, so connect with those people. Often the, the library has all kinds of grant writing uh, resources or just how to write your business plan, how to, you know, how to apply for a loan, all of those resources are going to help you get money wherever, whether it's a loan, whether it's a seed grant, um, whether it's, you know, applying to be a contractor with the government. I mean, all of that work is it, it goes, it crosses all of those boundaries. 
and and it's work. I mean that that yeah. is. I, I want to make sure that we're clear. Everything we've discussed tonight is going to take some effort. Yeah. But if you're committed to what you're doing, you make that effort. I don't mind doing my job. I rather enjoy it, right. and I know right. I'm making a difference. And so that makes me undeterred. And it doesn't. And and it doesn't always mean that I make the most money. You know, right. I've done some projects where. I didn't make as much money, but it's building a relationship or it's getting exposure to people or it's, I do this for this person and I know it's going to come back later because then they'll tell their best friend that. And I think it's so important to really start building relationships. Um, I can't believe anyone in North Carolina who's heard Leslie talk tonight will not track her down at the library in the next week. Yeah, you got it. You just go up, shake her hand, and be like, "Hey, I could you?" So I heard you can help me find a grant, and I'm like, "Yes, let's schedule a say, time." You said you said you could help a person if you knew exactly what field they're in. <laughs> this is my industry. Yeah. Show me. Show me the money. Yeah, and you will do it, right? Yeah, because that's my actual job. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I I would drive down there from Baltimore. <laughs> just to have her spend an hour with me trying to figure out some opportunities, no lie. So yeah. if you folks who are in North Carolina, you got to take advantage of this, that, that there is so much information, there's so many resources, and there's a lot of untapped stuff. We haven't talked about all the um, uh, foundations yeah. that people start with a million dollars and every year they have to spend down 5% of it. So they're looking for some pet proposal and I, I had a friend who got funding that way. I have a friend who um, has a guitar store in Baltimore and he put it at a location where the city was giving no rent for five years. The, the, the city pays the rent. He had no rent for five years, gave him five years to build the business. Yeah. And you know, they, they even paid the electric. And, and it was because they wanted to bring businesses into this area that wasn't the nicest. It wasn't the perfect area, but now it's one of the up and coming parts of the city. And I tell you, if you if I can get five years without rent, I'd move into an office location anywhere today. You know, so absolutely. Leslie, do you have anything else, or is that your list? This was my list, just that I have um, very much more specific information in the resource guide that I'm going to send right. out to folks and link on our website. Um, and again, this was me just kind of out there. And I very much understand that I'm an information professional. So I sort of knew where to go. But listen, there are libraries everywhere. There are degree librarians everywhere in this country. Schedule a time with them. Um, much like your elected officials, please don't just show up because that's not going to do well either. We're business professionals. Schedule an appointment. Um, librarians can give you an hour of their time. They can converse with you via email, send you things, send you links, um, send you templates, communicate with you to help support the information need that you have. So reach out to your library um, and you know just be persistent. That's my best advice um, because if Bob has said it a million times, if this is what you're passionate about, it's gonna happen for you. I will tell you, Leslie, when I was writing my first book about soft skills, I was really struggling to find one area of information that I kept seeing articles about, but I couldn't find the articles. And I one day I was in the library and I'm just like, you know what, I'm going to go to the library and just ask her. And I went to the library and I asked her and she made this her passion project for about two weeks. She's like, I'm going to find you those five articles. and she borrowed one from a library in Wisconsin that had it and it was a photocopy. She had another one on microfish. I mean, and she did all this work and she was thrilled to have the opportunity to help me because I said, ah, oh, this is the greatest thing in the world. I sent her a book, a signed copy of the book. She couldn't have been happier just to be able to use her skills to help me because I had tried everything in, under the sun and when I finally hit the wall, it's like, I need this information. 
how can I get it? And I've found every time I've ever been to a librarian anywhere, they've always been able to help me find it. You helped me, I don't think you even know this. You told me about Libby. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, and I was complaining about the books I could find. I've read bestsellers since we started this whole, this whole Good. effort. I can't keep up with the amazing great books that you were able to help me access on my Kindle, no less. Yeah. And so yeah. if you're not using the library, you are missing a resource. Even if it's just to go in there and I've done this, I'm like, hey, I do this, I do business coaching. Can you show me anything that's come in in the last couple of months that might be of interest? And they go and get, oh, well, here are three books. Yeah. Oh, I know there's a great article in um, Smithsonian. Yeah. It, it's just an, an untapped resource. Yeah, all of our databases that are free to help, you know, merchants. Um, you know, a lot of libraries have um, free analytic databases that you can access. I mean, we have NC Live, which is um, our uh, consolidated digital resource center. Um, and it's I've all- I've been it's using it. Free. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. I, I mean, it's, if you're sitting and watching TV one night and you have an iPad or a, uh, or some other device that you can be working on, I, while I'm watching TV, I'll often be typing away, just looking for things. Yeah. Because you never know what you'll find. Information's power. So with that, with that, Leslie, if you'll indulge me for a minute, I want to tell people how they can uh, take advantage of some of the things I do. That's okay. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, and I, I want to make this really clear. My, my mission is to help entrepreneurs and business leaders and business owners be more successful. And that takes a couple of different forms. One is um, I have a Facebook group called The Ring of Renegades where you can join, it's totally free, and you will be surrounded by, at the moment, 905 entrepreneurs, business leaders, managers, and they get in there and have discussions every day. I also do a um, Facebook Live every weekday with my partner and some of these things, and we talk about business topics. Everything from uh, this week, it's about possibilities. A couple weeks ago, it was about confidence. A couple months ago, it was self-doubt. Um, we are constantly trying to help people figure out how they can be more successful. I also have a membership group that costs a little money. It's about $150 a month right now, where we give you access to unlimited coaching sessions that last 15 minutes. And you may say, what can you do in 15 minutes? You'd be amazed what I can get you through in 15 minutes. And our whole mission there is to help people deal with that immediate problem. So if your problem is, uh, I talked to someone yesterday about, I really don't want to call this person. They've been calling me for three weeks. They're really upset. I coached them through how to do that call. And it turned out the person wasn't upset. So they were all spun up and worried about this, but it turned out to be wrong. So that's one area I've helped people figure out sales. Um, I've figured out management issues. And then the third thing I do is I do individual coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching where we, we get together once a week, usually over Zoom for an hour, and we talk about the issues facing your business. This can be, I don't make it a long-term contract. You'll go out and see a whole bunch of business coaches that do like you have to commit to a year and some exorbitant amount of money. I'm not that guy. I want you to be involved with me for as long as it makes sense. If that's two weeks, great. If it's two months, that's great. Or in one case, it's been two years. Perfectly fine. And when someone says, hey, Bob, I'd like to take a break. I'm like, okay, fine. I'll stop the payment and we move on. So if any of those things interest you, I would love to talk to you about what that might look like. If we didn't cover a topic over the last five weeks that's of interest to you, that you think I might have some experience or knowledge in, please track me down. I am always eager to share what I know. I'm always happy to help people. Just, you know, send an email to me and Leslie will put it in the, uh, I'm sure in the resources, send me an email, say, How's, I was in that workshop and you didn't cover this thing. I'd love to talk to you. I'll send you my schedule. You can get on my schedule. And with that, Leslie, I want to thank everyone. This has been great. Yeah. I've learned a whole lot tonight. 
I learned a whole lot last week. Yeah. And the first three weeks, it's funny. I do that workshop a lot and it clarifies for me each time I get closer and closer to who and what I'm trying to do. So yeah. I want to thank you for the opportunity. I want to thank you everyone who's been watching this. I know we haven't gotten to meet you all. Please connect with me on LinkedIn. You can go to LinkedIn and look for Bob Graham. I'll look just like this. I'd love to connect with you on LinkedIn. Go through my LinkedIn connections and see if there's someone you want to know because I will connect you. Yep. Bob, this has been great. Uh, I want to thank NC Idea for um, the grant to help fund this program. Um, always reach out to me. You can reach out to the library. Um, again, if there are topics that you need resources on, if you need grant writing help, we, along with the grant to have Bob speak with us, we also purchased over 150 different business books and titles for the library's collection. Everything from um, templates to HR to leadership to nice. books written by entrepreneurs. Um, we have some of the suggested reading lists. Um, we have all of that available for you. And if there's something that we missed, let us know. We can always um, try to get more funding and we'll bring Bob back and we'll do it again. So let us know. Like and to everybody, who, yeah, to everybody who watched the series, we really appreciate it. Um, Bob, I can't thank you enough. As always, this has been great. Excellent. And if you have feedback, please send it to Leslie. Please. We'd love to hear. If you have a suggestion, we did something that, that you loved or something that you didn't think or we didn't cover something deep enough, we're always trying to approve these things. I'm always, I know Leslie too, so feel free to share that with us as well. Thank you, everyone. Be well. Good luck with your endeavors.